Hey guys, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and I want to talk to you today about video games. Oh, I know, shock horror, I know, especially considering the channel that we're on, but more specifically about how video games make you better at life. Now, a lot of you might have been told by the news, uh, your parents, hell, even the person you're holding at knife point, that video games are bad for you. And yes, there is a partial truth to that. If you spend all your time online, you're going to be pale, isolated, and probably not eating well as a result, which can affect your mood and your behaviour. But no one talks about the benefits of gaming, which is what I'm here to talk about today. So I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 ways playing video games make you better at life. And speaking of bettering your life, I just released a silly ad for my t-shirts on the gaming channel and it would mean the world to me if you would check it out. I don't care if you buy the merch or not, but trust me, the ad is worth a watch by itself. Anyway, on with the list. Number 10. They encourage lateral thinking. One of the most important life skills I think it's possible to learn is the ability to laterally think. Thinking laterally is basically thinking your way around an obstacle, and it comes up in countless ways within video games. I mean, how many times have you come up against a locked door or other obstacle that needs a complex solution to solve? Even if it's just a key you need to find, chances are that some logic puzzle will be in the way. Games like Professor Layton thrive on this model of puzzles as barrier to progress, but you'll find that even in platforming games like Spyro, you'll need to sometimes come up with solutions that aren't as simple as go to A to get B. Now, not all these challenges are hard, but they don't need to be, because each time your brain is thinking laterally, it's engaging your mind in a manner other than being told what to do, which is teaching it to go through this process in real life should such a situation occur. Number 9. They develop your decision-making skills our choices define us. They make us who we are and what we'll become. For example, one day I picked up the mic and popped on a hat and called myself the greatest thing ever to appear on What Culture Gaming, and I was bloody right. Making decisions is an important part of life, and while they aren't always as exciting as choosing to save the world or becoming a psychic alien overlord, it's an essential skill to develop. Those who decide often get to lead, and you don't want to be a person who has their choices made for them, do you? Of course not, but even deeper than that, being able to recognize a choice is incredibly important. If you are able to see a situation and then identify its outcomes, you'll be able to move in ways that benefit you and others. Therefore, when games give you choices, they're teaching you not only what you can get out of it, but also what signals to look for in the first place. Number 8. They increase your vocabulary Now this one is a bit of a stretch, seeing as most vocab in games is built around cliches and words made up for the sake of the story, but there are elements of truth to the idea that some video games increase your vocabulary of both English and foreign languages. Think about the way that Dutch speaks to his gang in Red Dead 2, or in Skyrim which teaches kids about the words illusion, conjuration, and elemental. It might seem basic to some of us, but imagine not knowing these words, then seeing them appear in-game with context, and coming away thinking, hey, I might actually use that in real life. It's the same with reading, watching films, and general conversation. You absorb new words and meanings into your lexicon, and before you know you're using it in new conversations, passing it on to someone else. And yes, I am aware that a lot of video games swear which isn't the best thing to learn for kids, but still, let's look on the bright side and agree that at least some learning has taken place. Number 7. Multitasking one of the most underrated things about video games is that, while for most intents and purposes it might look like you're just sitting there staring at a screen, you're actually multitasking the hell out of that situation. Being told to move a character might seem completely arbitrary to most seasoned gamers, but every time you pick up a new title, you're learning the new rules of the game you're trying to complete. This is fed to you through visual stimuli as well as what you're hearing, and you react using buttons to dodge, progress, fight, or however it may be that the situation needs to be solved. And what you're doing here is multitasking in a base sense. Now add to this a list of combos to remember, objectives to keep in mind, and a myriad of other factors going on, and you're engaging with the title in a way that's actually requiring a sizable effort. Reflexes, mental skills, hand-eye coordination are all tested even in the most simplest of games, so the next time that somebody accuses you of just sitting down, remind them that you're actually giving yourself quite the mental workout. Number 6. They increase your pattern recognition skills. Have you ever waited to observe a guard patrol route in order to sneak past unnoticed, or ever been faced with a boss bearing down on you which requires you to dodge its attack and then launch a counter move? Well, you, my friend, are engaging in some serious pattern recognition skills. Through gaming, you'll increase your ability to recognize repetitive patterns. For example, when you start a game, you might find a certain enemy tough to beat, unpredictable in the way that they move and attack, but play long enough and you'll be making short work of them. Science has gone on to term this, getting good. 
Recognizing and memorizing patterns is a hugely important, albeit subtle, life skill. You don't want to miss out on something just because you couldn't see the systematic signs that other humans give off. Hell, I remember kicking myself when your mum sent me signals and I didn't pick up on them. But then again, how was I meant to know that her shoving a cucumber right up her fryer was code for some rutting? It's subtle, right? Also, that's my one per list. Number five, they increase your spatial awareness and sense of direction. Now, while some people might pick up a copy of games like GTA and Saints Row and write it off as filth made by the devil himself, there's actually a large amount of teaching going on the moment that you step foot into these worlds. It's because these games and other open world titles often task you with getting from A to B in a shorter time as possible. While no one is saying that you should drive in reality the way you do in GTA, the very fact that you're picking lines through traffic, attempting to avoid hazards and simultaneously heading towards a destination means that the brain functions you are using are the same ones that you'll be using out on the real road. Which admittedly makes me even more worried when I crash and I see my character go through the windscreen like he's got a James Bond ejector seat attached to him, but we won't dwell on that for too long. But it's not just games like GTA that test this. Any game that tasks you with returning to a base or shop or anywhere that you need to remember its location is also testing your memory, its placement in the game world, and how to get back there quick sharp to shift some pots or whatever you've found out in the game world. Number four, they promote creativity. One need only look at games like Minecraft to see how this statement is true. It's such a simple game and yet can be one of the most complex experiment kits that you can get your hands on. There are many other games which offer this sense of build something from nothing, see what this does, and can you put this in that? Sorry, actually, that last one was just a phrase that me and your dad use. Hey, look at that, I'm switching things up. There's one of my one dad per list? I don't know. What I mean to say is that it's everywhere, from farming simulators to city building titles to shaping worlds as gods themselves, and all give you the tools and allow you to go utterly mental with them. We've seen games made inside other games, challenges created out of code, brand new content made that the original developers would balk at. Gamers are some of the most committed forces out there when they get an idea in their heads. Hell, it doesn't even need to be what you make in the game, but how you play it. There's a guy who's beaten Dark Souls using a dance mat. Truly, it is a wonderful, bizarre, and brilliant time to be involved in this industry. Number three. They strengthen your observational skills. This might seem like a silly idea at first, but it's true. Video games actually do condition you to look at the world in a different way. I'm not saying that you're going to see life bars pop over people's heads or that you'll see your boss glow gold when he's got a task for you, although that would actually be helpful to call Josh out on why he's going to the toilet so much because I doubt his pee bar gets that full that quickly. Now, what I mean is that in video games, you're always scouting for enemies, for clues, for objects that don't look right because they usually mean that something is about to happen. In real life, this teaches you, albeit subtly, that there are identifiers to look out for, little things that the brain should take notice of in the day-to-day. I'm not going to claim that video games will save your life or something while on a walk to the shops, but you might start to notice that you observe things quicker and identify problems more immediately. Number two, multiplayer modes strengthen social skills. There was a time, and it was relatively recently, that hardcore gamers were almost social pariahs, loners with no social skills who smell as bad as they look, unable to function in a social circle. But just like most social pariahs, the above just isn't true by any stretch of the imagination. Now, a study by a graduate at Victoria University has shown that amongst a group of people deemed problem gamers by society, those that play for 50 hours or more per week, only 1% exhibited signs of poor social development, such as shyness or low self-esteem. Essentially, far from promoting antisocial behavior, online gaming actually strengthens social skills, all the while promoting healthy competitiveness and emphasizing teamwork within a safe and fun environment. Now, I know that you're all going to point me towards the amount of racial insensitivity, the sexism, the horrible people that are online, and true, these people unfortunately do exist. But think about the situation again. These people are severely outweighed by the majority who simply play their games and just mind their business. These people are just here to enjoy gaming with others, and on a personal level, I've actually made some real long-term mates through gaming, so don't focus just on the whining babies you hear online, just make sure you're on the opposite team the next round and give them something to cry about. And number one, they promote perseverance. Now, you might remember earlier on in the list, I talked about getting good, a principle that kind of originated in the Soulsborne lexicon a while back and has now been used to describe the relationship a video game player has with the titles such as Dark Souls, which requires skill, learning, and patience. 
It's this patience which is actually the most interesting aspect of the process, as while the media might be quick to paint a picture of a moody 10-year-old slamming their controller down after a game of Fortnite hasn't gone well, there's a huge swathe of the gaming public that understand that to enjoy some video games, defeat and loss are something that needs to be overcome. It's a valuable life lesson, and one that I feel that we could all do with paying more attention to. Sometimes in life, things won't go your way. Sometimes your health might fail, sometimes your mind, but whatever comes up, try to remember something. It's okay. It's okay to try and not succeed the first time because it allows us to learn. It allows us to refine what we want out of life. If you find yourself backing away from a project after an unsuccessful attempt, maybe it's just not for you. Or maybe it's something that you can tackle better further down the line, having learned from your mistakes. And remember, as in the case of Dark Souls and life, there's nothing that we can't get through with a little bit of jolly cooperation. Remember, you can do this. And there we go, those were 10 ways that video games make you better at life. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, and I do genuinely hope that you are treating yourself well, both physically and mentally. You deserve the best, and do not let anyone tell you any differently. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero if you'd like to chat, and as always, I have been Jules, you have been awesome, and I will speak to you soon.